Good day, everyone. Today, we will be discussing the introduction to the Philippine Fishing Grounds. So in this module, we will be talking about some of the technical terms commonly used in the Philippine Fishing Ground course. And we will also be tackling on the Philippine geography or the geographic location of the Philippines and also the total aquatic resources of the Philippines. So first off, um, here are our objectives on this um, course, no? because this is still our first meeting. No? So what is Philippine Fishing Ground? Philippine Fishing Ground is just basically, according to the same 043 of the CHED, uh, basically the course description of Philippine Fishing Ground is, it is a general survey of the Philippine Fishing Grounds, including the status of the fisheries resources and their utilization. So this is the scope of our course, no? And um, heads up also because uh, sooner, later in this course, you will be required to have a virtual reporting, each one of you. So um, perhaps in one of our uh, synchronous classes, you will be given a specific topic to report on, okay? So the objective of our um, course is basically to be acquainted with the geography of the Philippines. Second is to learn on the techniques in determining bathymetry. Third is to be familiar with the major and minor fishing grounds of the Philippines. And fourth is basically to know the principles behind spatial distribution of aquatic resources. And lastly, to identify basic equipment used in fish, de fish detection. So basically, these are the five uh, general objectives of the Philippine Fishing Ground course. So um, modules were already prepared, no? And I'd like every one of you to be um, present in our next synchronous class. And uh, to start with, let us first start with the definition of terms, as I've mentioned. First term here that is commonly used in the Philippine fishing ground is the aquatic resources. So what's basically the aquatic resources? I, perhaps most of you have already encountered the term aquatic resources, especially in your introduction to uh, fisheries or yeah, or some other uh, related course on this one. So aquatic resources basically includes fish, uh, all other aquatic flora and fauna, and other living resources in the aquatic environment, including but not limited to salt and corals. So this is a definition of aquatic resources taken from the RA 8550, otherwise known as the Philippine Fisheries Code. And the second um, term here is bay. So a bay is a coastal indention, usually, usually the result of faulting or other tectonic or regional geologic processes strongly affected by tides and exhibiting salinities ranging from oceanic to brackish depending on the amount of land drainage relative to the oceanic exchange another common name for this type is uh, type of system is a gulf but basically a gulf is larger than a bay so take note of that no so basically a bay I think you have already uh, heard the term or the word bay before. So basically, a bay is a coastal indention. It is a body of water uh, surrounded or not surrounded, but um, that has some sort of indention, land masses in between the indentions, right? So that is a bay. So the salinity between on this on this uh, type of um, Aquatic environment is basically ranges from oceanic to brackish. No, it it basically depend on the amount of uh, freshwater intrusion in the locality or in the area of the bay, right? So that's bay. I hope that's clear. Another is the coastal area or coastal zone. It is a band of dry land and adjacent ocean space, water, and submerged land in which terrestrial processes and uses directly affect the oceanic processes and uses, and vice versa. 
Its geographic extent may include areas within a landmark limit of 1 km from the shoreline at high tide to include mangrove swamps, brackish water pads, um, nipa swamps, historic rivers, sandy beaches, and other areas within the seaward limit of 20 meters isobath to include coral reefs, algal flats, seagrass, seabeds, and other soft bottom areas. So basically, this is the uh, very basic definition of uh, the coastal area or coastal zone. Um, in our previous perceptions, uh, I think most of you have already ha um, initial perceptions of what is a coastal area or what are what is a coastal zone. So basically, a coastal area is a coastal zone is a band of dry and uh, oceanic area, no? Yung landward and, and then the seaward. Landward is 100 meters from the shoreline. And then seaward is 200 meters or 1 kilometer from the shoreline landwards. And then 200 meters seaward. So that's basically uh, the definition of our coastal area or coastal zone. So all types of environments that fall within 1 kilometer from the shoreline landwards and 200 meters seawards uh, type of environments, those are included in the, in the coastal zone or the coastal area, right? So those that is the definition of the coastal area. And then the next one is coastal lagoon. So the coastal lagoon is an inland body of water, usually oriented parallel to the coast, separated by the ocean by a barrier connected to the ocean by one or more restricted inlets and having depth with which seldom exceed a couple of meters. A lagoon may or may not be subjected to tidal mixing and salinity can vary from the coastal freshwater, li uh, freshwater lake to hypersaline lagoon. Coastal lagoons occupy 13% of the coastal areas worldwide and are often impacted by both natural and anthropogenic influences. So, there you have it. The definition of the coastal lagoon basically is a lagoon um, separated by a barrier. So, it may be either a coral reef or a landmass, which is uh, connected to the ocean by one or more inlets. No, Sometimes there are one inlet or uh, several inlets basta uh, basta separated lang silang yung yung ocean at saka yung lagoon with a certain landmass or a coral reef or a certain vegetation and so on and so forth and then uh, as mentioned here it is or uh, it may be affected or not affected with tidal fluctuation and the salinity ranges from that of the freshwater lake or uh hypersaline lagoon so it depends still depends upon the intrusion um, amount of fresh water right so that's coastal lagoon and then here we have the term demarcated area so still this is taken from the definition in the r8550 or the philippine fisheries code so demarcated areas are boundaries defined by markers and assigned exclusively to specific individuals Excuse me. Or organizations for certain specified and limited uses, such as, say, for example, uh, demarcated areas could either be for aquaculture only, for sea ranching and sea farming. So, uh, demarcated areas are again um, specific areas assigned to specific organizations or individuals, right? So, this is the demarcated areas. So either it could be assigned for aquaculture, sea ranching, and sea farming. It is assigned for fish aggregating devices. So I, I, I think you have already heard about uh, the F FAD or the FAD or the fish aggregating devices, right? So the local term for that is payao, right? And then there are also the market areas for fixed and passive fishing gears and demarcated areas for fry and fingerlings gathering. Um, excuse me for a bit. 
Alright, so where were we? Um, the lobat yung laptop ko, so I have to pause for a while. So where were we? We are on. Uh, we were on the demarcated areas. So as I mentioned, there are areas uh, uh, exclusively assigned to specific individuals that is only limited to the uses for aquaculture, uh, uses for fish aggregating devices, uses for the operation of the fixed and passive fishing gears, and sometimes uh, exclusively for fry and uh, fingerlings gathering, especially for aquaculture or, or some sort of uh, stock enhancement or sea ranching and etc. etc. Right, so that, that is the definition of demarcated areas. Another term here is the exclusive economic zone. So the exclusive economic zone, otherwise known as the EZZ or EEZ rather, it is an area beyond an adjacent to the territorial sea which shall not extend beyond 200 nautical miles from the baseline as defined by under existing laws. So later, later on, you will see how wide our EEZ is is in the Philippines and uh, I'll be showing you a map on the, the boundaries of the territorial waters of the Philippines. So that is EEZ or the Exclusive Economic Zone. Again, um, adjacent territorial sea which shall not extend beyond 200 nautical miles. I hope you already know what's the difference between um, nautical miles and um, uh, kilometers right and then uh, here we have another definition which is an estuary estuary basically mean that it is an inland river valley or a section of coastal plain drowned as a sea invaded the lower course of a river during the Holocene sea level rise Containing seawater measurably diluted by land drainage affected by tides and usually shallower than 20 meters. So all um, areas that is near the river valley or rivers or river mouths, those are considered as historian environments. That has usually a depth of not more than 20 meters. So that is the definition of a story and then another is the fma or the fisheries management areas so fisheries management areas could either be a bay a gulf or a lake or any other fishery area which may be delineated for fishery resource management purposes so um, fma are basically a variety of aquatic environment that is usually delineated for FMA purposes or uh, fishery resource management purposes. So it could either be a mangrove area, it could either be a wetland, it could either be a lake, a bay, a gulf, or any type of aquatic environment that is deline delineated for fishery resource management purposes. Right, so that is FMA. And then the word fishing basically mean taking of fishery species from their wild state or habitat with or without the use of fishing vessels. So this is the basic definition of fishing. Now, uh, if you'll ask me, sir, um, yun bang, yun bang pangunguha or uh, nanguha kami ng tilapia sa loob ng fish pan Fishing din ba yun? No. Because that is already then the no longer a natural habitat of the tilapia. You are already impounding the tilapia within um, in a certain impoundment. It could either be a pond, a tank, or a cage. If you caught them there or from there, you are not already um, exercising a fishing activity. No? You are not doing a fishing activity. You are harvesting, right? So fishing is taking fishery species. It could either be fish, crustaceans, or finfish crustaceans mollusks, bivalves, or etc, etc, or aquatic plants, as long as it is from their wild state, it is considered as fishing. Uh, other than that, it is not called as fishing, right? So that is the definition of fishing. 
And then we have here the word fishing grounds. So this is our uh, course, no? Fishing grounds are areas in any body of water where fish and other aquatic resources congregate and become the target of capture. So when we say capture, meaning to say it is from their wild state, right? So again, from their wild state. Uh, sir, what if a certain, uh, shall we say, area is only dominated with plants? There are no fishes, no crustaceans, or no um, bivalves there, or mollusk there. So, uh, exclusively lang talaga siya na mga uh, color pa lang, yung yukuma lang ang nag-grow, mga aquatic plants lang. Is it still considered as fishing ground? Yes, of course. As long as it is an aquatic resources and your uh, fishers are taking them at, from their wild state, it is still considered as a fishing ground. So fish and other aquatic resources. Remember our definition of our aquatic resources. So all aquatic resources, aquatic organisms, including but not limited to salt and corals. So that is what we mean by aquatic resources. So that is the definition of fishing ground. Another is the definition of municipal waters. So municipal waters include not only streams, not only lakes, inland bodies of water, and tidal waters within the municipality, which are not included within the protected areas as defined under the Republic Act Number no. 7586 or the NIPAS Law. The public forests, timberlands, forest services, and fishery reserves, but also uh, marine waters included between two lines drawn perpendicular to the general coastline from points where boundary lines of the municipality touch the sea at low tide and the third line parallel to the general coastline including the offshore inlands and 15 kilometers from the coastline where two municipalities are so situated on opposite shores that there is less 30 kilometers of waters or marine waters between them, the third parallel line shall be equally distant from the opposite shore and respective municipalities. So basically, the basic definition of this one, uh, basic interpretation of this one is 30 kilometers from the coastline towards the seashore is the municipal waters. This is where our municipal fishers could um, undergo fishing, right? So, all types of environment, it could be either uh, streams, lakes, inland bodies of waters, and uh, other uh, public forests, timberlands, mangrove areas, and fishery reserves and the marine waters, the coral reefs, as long as it is within the 30 kilometers is the um, municipal water, right? Now, if uh, two municipalities are situated and then between the municipalities, there are less than 30 kilometers for them, for each of them. So the boundary should be equally distant from the two municipalities. So I hope you have... Uh, get that right so another um, further dis definition of municipal waters it is the definition of municipal waters is reflected in the three major laws in the pd 704 or presidential decree 704 the local government code and the fisheries code analysis reveals that the definition of municipal waters from 1932 or the F fisheries act 4003 to the present has changed a little except that the area claimed to encompass municipal waters. No, Before, uh, there is a certain variation on the definition of municipal waters. No, um, Today, we have already the concrete definition of municipal waters as defined in the Philippine Fisheries Code in, under the Section 2, the definition of terms. Right? So that is municipal waters and then here we have the comparison or the perspective on laws affecting the zoning of municipal waters. So as I've mentioned, there are um, three and then itong Commonwealth Act 4003 of 1932 was the previous um, 
definition of commercial water, I mean municipal waters. So, in the Commonwealth Act 4003 of 1932, there is less than 5.5 kilometers from the shoreline assigned for municipal fishers. And then for area assigned for commercial fishers beyond 5.5 kilometers from the shoreline and outside 200 meters from any fish coral. So basically, um, this this was the definition of the municip um, or the law that supports the areas to be fished by commercial fishers and municipal fishers. So this was according to the Commonwealth Act of 1932-4003. And then um, we have here the PD-704 of 1975 that less than 7 kilometers from the shoreline, less than 7 fathoms deep are the areas where municipal fishers could go fishing. And then when we compare it to the access of the commercial fishers, it is beyond 7 kilometers and deeper than 7 fathoms. So that is according to the 704 uh, presidential decree. And then here we have the 1991 a Republic Act 7160, which states that municipal fishers could go fishing 15 kilometers from the shoreline with an option to allow, right? So with an option to allow. And then uh, commercial fishers is basically beyond 7 kilometers, I mean, uh, beyond 15 kilometers shoreline. This is still debatable that is according to the republic act 7160 of 1991 the very recent one is the ra8550 or the philippine fisheries code of 1998 which allows 15 kilometer shoreline with an option to allow commercial fishing from 10.1 to 15 kilometers no an option to allow and then uh for commercial fishers beyond 15 kilometers with an option to seek permit from 10.1 to 15 kilometers beyond 15 kilometers in the municipal waters right so uh, that is the basic definition of the uh, commercial and uh, municipal fishers access to commercial and municipal waters respectively okay so these are the laws again Commonwealth Act 4003, Speedy 704, uh, RA7160, and RA8550, right? So those are the laws. And then um, another definition of terms is the word Philippine waters. When we say Philippine waters, what do we mean by that? So Philippine waters are all waters includes all bodies of water within the Philippine territory such as inland waters like uh, lakes, rivers, streams, creeks, brooks, ponds, swamps, lagoons, gulfs, bays, seas. So these are offshore types of water. So all bodies of water, all types of aquatic environment and other bodies of water now existing or which may hereafter exist in the province or cities, municipalities, and barangays and the waters around between and connecting the islands of the archipelago regardless of their breadth dimensions, the territorial sea, the seabeds, the insular shelves, and other water uh, waters over the Philippines' as sovereignty and jurisdiction including 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone and continental shelf. So, lahat ng classing water na na fall within the um, Philippine jurisdiction or Philippine territory are called Philippine waters. Now, bakit may tinatawag tayo dito na um, all other bodies of water now existing or which may hereafter exist? No? Kasi usually, mayroong mga inland, especially in inland type of aquatic environment, there are uh, types of aquatic environment, freshwater lakes or freshwater ponds that today does not exist but sooner in the future will exist because of some uh, natural activities or uh, tectonic plate movements or volcanic eruptions. So it will create uh, some sort of a basin or a crater which will gather uh, rainfall or uh, 
contributed or uh, contributed by different tributaries ng mga rivers and streams and brooks or creeks so uh, in the future you it will be flooded with water and it was not defined as one of the philippine waters previously because wala pang ganun and then kapag nandun na siya still it is of course considered as a philippine water as long as it is within the philippine jurisdiction or territory Right, so that is the definition of Philippine waters. Now, here we have the term insular shelves and continental shelves. Take note of that. I hope you have already know what's the difference between these shelves. Right, so that is Philippine waters. And then we have here a term strait. So what is a strait? Hindi yung strait na nasa inyo na, yung mga Magallanes Street, Aguinaldo Street, or ano pang classing street. No, straight are uh, inland marine waterway connecting two oceans or seas. Characteristics of sea straits with respect to circulation, salinity distribution, tidal processes, and water depth vary widely between straits. So, magkaiba yung mga uh, tidal processes, water depth, salinity distribution, and water circulation in every type of strait, depending on the uh, water body that basically separates the two water bodies, right? So that is a strait. Um, in your, perhaps in history, history one, no, meron kayong mga uh, minimize na mga provinces, mga regions, and their respective uh, province, municipal, provincial capitals, and so so on so forth. Meron dun sa mapa ninyo makikita niyo ng mga straits no sa of course not the land no yung mga sa water bodies na mga straits so you can see there the different straits of the philippines and then later on you will be acquainted on what are the different straits of the philippines that basically separates different fishing grounds within the uh, jurisdiction of the philippine waters now here we have another definition of a tidal river no tidal river is an inland river valley drowned as the sea invaded the lower river course during the sea level rise containing only fresh water but subject to tidal sea level variations and sometimes reversing tidal currents in downstream sections depending on the amount of um, fresh water inputs no may mga uh, times na itong tidal river are, are basically flooded with uh, tidal seas and then uh, kasi mahina yung intrusion or flow ng river meron ding itong tidal river dominates no meaning to say tidal river are very diverse type of environment because there are lots of um, apart from there are lots of nutrients coming from the river itself there are also some sort of different wide varieties of organisms that gather there because of the aquatic productivity no productive yung mga tidal rivers natin mga river mouths and etc etc so those are our definitions commonly used in the philippine fishing ground course so i hope you have um, taken that in your notes no you could also watch this video in in youtube repeatedly no pwede niyong balik-balikan and please subscribe to this channel for future videos to be posted in relation to fishing ground and other courses for fisheries no meron tayong mga videos diyan sa youtube na bs fisheries professor na aquaculture nutrition aquatic ecology and post harvest fisheries so you can browse this channel okay so as i mentioned earlier in the introduction we will also be discussing the geography of the philippines so when we talk about geography, just the location, the nature of what Philippines is, and the uh, some sort of numerical data that basically um, talks about Philippines, right? So the Philippines is an archipelago. When we say archipelago, that is composed of many islands. One of the world's largest archipelago composed of 7,100 islands with a total land area of... 300,000 square kilometers lie in the major island groups three major island groups which are Luzon, 
Mindanao and Visayas and Luzon as the largest, accounting for 141,395 square kilometer, seconded by Mindanao, 101,999 square kilometers, and followed by Visayas, 56,606 square kilometers total area. So these are the three major areas of the Philippines. These are basically uh, basic um, knowledge of being a Filipino, right? So another is the archipelago is somewhat elongated in shape, extended from 1,840 kilometers from north to south and about 1,000 kilometers from east to west and its broadest. So this is the total area of the Philippines. Total coastline is about 17,460 kilometers. So this, since we are an archipelagic country, basically it sums out all the coastal areas of the Philippines. Located within the equator and the Tropic of Cancer between latitudes of 4, minute, uh, 4 degrees 23 minutes and 21 degrees 25 minutes north and between longitudes of 116 um, degrees 0 minutes and 127 degrees 0 minutes east so these are the coordinates of the philip of of the the philippines where it is located no bounded in the north by bashi channel and in the east by the specific uh, pacific ocean <laughs> In the south by Sulu and Celebes Seas, and in the west by South China Sea. So these are basically uh, bodies of water that bounds the Philippines. No, sa taas Basi Channel, sa dito sa east is the Pacific Ocean, and sa south is the Sulu or the Celebes Sea, and then the west by uh, South China Sea. No. And uh, perhaps one of my requirements for you is to have your own map showing the different uh, bodies of water of the Philippines. You could buy uh, maps um, anywhere uh, in your respective localities. Make sure that that specific map has the um, identified bodies of water of the Philippines. Right? So that is another and then uh, some more no we talk about the tropic of, tropic of cancer um, area equator and tropic of cancer san pala yung equator san pala yung uh, tropic of cancer san pala yung tropic of capricorn na tinatawag san pala yung temperate region san pala yung polar region so let us know that through this figure no meron tayo dito this is taken from solstice.bahamas.com so, yung tinatawag natin na Tropic of Cancer is yung sa taas ng equator, no? Yung sa taas ng equator. Yung Tropic of Capricorn naman, yung sa baba ng equator. So, ang Philippines, nakikita natin between Tropic of Cancer and equator. So, ito yung bansa natin. So, yung binigay ko kanina ng mga longitudes and latitude, latitudes, those are the coordinates where the Philippines is located, right? So, Philippines is somewhere here again in between or within the equator and Tropic of Cancer region. Yung tinatawag natin na tropical region, ito yung mostly yung mga region that falls under near the equator or tropical regions. Falls above this one are mga temperate regions or sub-temperate regions yung dito, temperate regions yung dito, tapos yung mga polar regions yung nasa uh, bandang kule or bandang taas at saka pinakababang banda. Right? So these are the different region classifications of the world and and uh, more about Philippine archipelago. So Philippines geographically the Philippines is considered as the a part of Southeast Asia, no? We are part of the Southeast Asian countries. You know, have you heard about the CIFDEC, no? CIFDEC is uh, semi-private institution, semi-private, semi-government institution that basically uh, focuses on um, aquaculture production. No, no. So, CIFDEC are located or or um, located in different Southeast Asian countries. No, so Philippines is one. 
and then some others like Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and uh, Thailand perhaps, and some other in, uh, Southeast Asian countries. And situated some 965 kilometers from the southeast coast of the mainland of Asia. So 965 kilometers from the southeast coast of the mainland of Asia. So if you go uh, southeast from the Asia, you will find the Philippines. To the north, Taiwan is the nearest neighboring country, being only 97 kilometers from Iami in Batanes province in the northest, northernmost island of the Philippines, which is the Batanes. In the south, archipelago extends within a few kilometers of Saba or the North Borin, Borneo and Northern Indonesian islands. So that's the reason why most of um, the, peop the people in the south, yung sa, siguro sa Tawi-Tawi, no? Meron silang mga, um, karamihan ng mga fishers nila, uh, nagmamarket doon sa uh, Indonesia no doon na sila nagmamarket meaning to say nagba backdoor sila which is illegal no illegal talaga yan so kapag nahuli sila ng mga authorities from the Indonesia of course they will be apprehended no and then located in the Pacific Ring of Fire which means to say a region of frequent volcanic activity so again maraming volcanic activity dito sa uh, Pacific Ring of Fire. If you could see a Pacific Ring of Fire, this one, this is the Pacific Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire is a string of volcanoes and sites of seismic activity or earthquakes around the edges of the Pacific Ocean. Um, deep ocean trenches and high mountain ranges are also part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. So, ito yung Ring of Fire natin. You can see here, this is the Philippines, no? This is the Philippines and this is the Pacific Ocean. You can see here that oh, uh, these are the volcanic faults or the Pacific Ring of Fire na tinatawag starting from the western coast of California and then the Middle America, west coast of Middle America and west coast of Peru. And then here the east part of Australia and then down to the Indonesia, the Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, the Japan, and uh, up to the this this region. So we have here what we call as the Ol Olution Trench, Olution Trench, right? So that is the what we mean by the Pacific Ring of Fire. And then more about the Philippine Archipelago. Uh, it, Philippines lies on the Western Pacific Earthquake Belt, which is a region of frequent volcanic movements, this situation may help to explain the pattern of landform and topographic characteristics of the archipelago, which is composed of a series of mountain ranges running in general north to south direction in close proximity to the sea. So most of the archaeologists, I mean, uh, geologists rather, no, gina pinag-aaralan nila yung mga formations ng isang bansa, formations ng isang uh, isang klasing lugar, no? Bakit na buo ito? Bakit naging ganyan? Bakit na bundok? Bakit may mga catchments and etc etc. So they go back, they dig back to history and what happened before, what are the tectonic uh, movements happen and what are the volcanic eruptions happen. So ito yung mga focus nila. So part of the reason why we have this some sort of mountainous part from north to south is basically because of this Pacific Ring of Fire. So, more or less, that's the theory, no? May mga ganyan na mga theory. And then, no very uh, high mountains are very steep slopes, no? Wala tayong masyadong steep na mga mountains. And Mount Apo is the highest peak. is only two... 1930 meters above sea level. Meron ngang mga ano eh, meron mga mga um, alamat, no? Diba? Naka, have you heard about the alamat of the Philippines? Bakit nabu ang Luzon, Visayas, at Mindanao? Siguro you have heard about tatlong higanti na nag-aaway, tapos nagbatuhan sila ng mga lupa, at saka nabuo yung Pilipinas. Tsaka yun, tapos. Um, bakit daw uh, maalat yung dagat? Kasi yung mga higanti na yon hmm, alam niyo na. Right? So, those are mga 
fictions, mga um, stories, no? Stories from our old ancestors, no? Uh, not science-based stories. And then, uh, Philippines has a few large rivers but many small rivers and streams which empty directly to the sea, no? Marami tayong large rivers, marami din tayong mga small rivers and some tributary streams and creeks which empty directly to the sea, of course. Yung lahat ng mga drainage, drainages, mga tributaries, mga runoffs from the mountainous areas will be uh, disseminated or will be uh, go, will go down to the sea, of course. Some of the large internal plains which uh, between the main mountain ranges and narrow coastal plains around most of the larger islands, no? some of the internal plains in, within the large um, mainlands. No? And then as I mentioned, uh, I'll be showing the Philippine Marine Juris Dictional Boundaries. So here we have a colored one. No? Ito yung tinatawag ko kanina na yung sa Basi Channel, sa baba, ah, sa taas rather. And then sa east is the South China Sea. South is Celebes Sea and the east is the Pacific Ocean or the Philippine Sea. Right? So this is uh, the boundaries. And the green one is uh, Extended Continental Shelf. Ito siya. And then the blue one is the exclusive economic zone. Itong mga ito. Exclusive economic zone. And then, uh, ito yung disputed territory ng Philippines. Ito. Disputed territory. And then here we have the iconic uh, jurisdiction of the Philippine marine boundaries. So, uh, you can see here in this legend supported with the definitions or laws that basically define the, that particular zonation. So the straight baselines are according to the Republic Act 3046, amended Republic Act 5446. Treaty limits, treaty parts of uh, Treaty of Paris 1998. So ito yun sila, treaty limits. And then the 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone is under the to presidential decree 1599 and 1970. Ito namang claim is anchored to the presidential decree 1596 and 1971. Ito yung sila. Right? So these are our boundaries of the Philippines. So those are all about the Philippine archipelago. And uh, as mentioned, I will also be showing you the total aquatic resources of the Philippines. This is in the 2007 taken from the Philippine Fisheries Profile. So first we have the marine resources. So the marine resources, we have the total territorial water of 200, uh, 2 million, uh, 220,000,000 hectares of total territorial water area including the exclusive economic zone meron tayong tinatawag na coastal and meron tayong tinatawag na oceanic territorial water so ang coastal accounts for about 26,600,000 hectares oceanic is about uh, 193,400,000 hectares again a total of 220 million hectares total territorial water area for marine resources and then ito namang shelf area or uh, those areas that basically have a depth of 200 meters it has a total area of 18,460,000 hectares so take note of these figures and then coral reef areas where uh, these are areas where uh, light penetrations could go deep down no, to process photosynthesis this is about 27,000 square kilometers and then coastal length or coast, coastline length is 17,460 kilometers. So those are the basic information about the marine resources of the Philippines. And then here we have the inland resources. So sa inland naman, ito yung mga bodies of water within the land masses of the Philippines. So swamp lands, total of 
246,063 hectares. If we break that down according to freshwater swamp lands and brackish water swamp lands, ang freshwater is about 106 and 328 hectares. Brackish water is 139 and 739,735 hectares, a total of 246,063 hectares for swamp plants. For existing fish ponds, we have 253,854 hectares. Fresh water is about 14,531 hectares. And brackish water is 239,323 hectares. So again, total of 253,854 hectares of existing fish pond. And then this is still again on 2007. No? Na data. And then other inland resources uh, like for example lakes, rivers, reservoirs and other inland resources. So inland resources accounting for 250,000 hectares. Ang lake for that is 200,000 hectares. Rivers is 31,000 hectares. Reservoirs are 19,000 hectares. So for lakes, the largest one is Laguna de Bay, seconded by our Lake Lanao and third is the Taal Lake and then fourth is Mainit and fifth is Nauhan. I hope you will be memorizing sooner in this uh, class the different uh, the top 10 lakes of the Philippines including the locations and their respective total areas right so those are our marine and inland resources of the Philippines so all in all those are our coverage for module 1 no Again, I'd like to encourage everyone to visit the BS Specialist Professor and subscribe to the YouTube channel through this link. And you could watch repeatedly this lecture according to your convenience. No? So, when you will have a spare time, kung kailan kayo magkakalood, no? I, I have, I have um, make use of the YouTube platform para naman uh, at least yung iba na hindi makakasali sa mga lecture discussions natin sa Google Meet is pwede silang makaka-view pa rin ng mga videos online at their ease, no? at their uh, convenience. No? Kasi mo, mo, most likely kapag nag-synchronous tayo, kapag nag-Google Meet tayo, kunti lang yung nakakasali. So meron tayong YouTube para naman at least kapag uh, kailan kayo magkaka-load, kailan kayo makabakante, uh, pwede kayong mag-view doon. Right? So again, encouraging everyone to subscribe this YouTube channel, especially that um, you will also be enrolling some other subjects, not just in the Philippine Fishing Grounds. Okay, so I hope you have stayed up to this moment in this video. So... Thank you very much for for uh, joining. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.